5.4, and it's the assets group report. We've got Mr. Nido going to present that today. Mr. Anderson? I'm on the Oh, right here. He's enjoying the, uh, the rain. The rain. Oh, is he now? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm surprised you start from me. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, again, um, people I take that report is read, and uh, Mr. Nolan can just highlight some um, areas there. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, Councillor, you're welcome to stop me any time and just ask questions or go to your own points. On page 41, uh, just highlighting that uh, the loading projects have made a start, uh, and Councillor Nolan will be happy to know that over there was first of the blocks. And uh, may I ask a question? Yeah. How, yeah. how is that new road going to be? So we will tie into the uh, road at the underpass. So there's no room for widening the road yeah. at that point. So once now we can have appropriate signage to indicate the road numbers at that point. Okay, the other project is the uh, domain house intersection. Uh, start by looking at uh, improving that alignment along that intersection. Moving on to page 43. Um, <coughs> at the last meeting, there was a proposal of polls on at the pearl place uh, recycling center that's been taken care of and, and repaired. Staff have also done some mounting of uh, trees along the entrance area of uh, the typical land, landfall and terrible transfer station, just for beautification. And, yep, so, yeah. uh, thank you, we have a question on the Yep. Uh, I'm quite concerned about the number of potholes that have been built two or three or four times and the same ones appear all the time. Um, yeah, uh, I am concerned and ask him why I can't uh, say the number of potholes that I go back to last summer. So <coughs> it is not as if that's come up this winter in the air period. Is there a standard that if they have to reach before a pothole refill becomes a, yep. um, a repair of a section? Yeah. So, uh, Madam Chair, a couple of uh, months ago, we did give council a lot of the portals on what we do, how we deal with it. Um, some of the portals um, that you see coming up, it's probably the weather. Uh, the guys, the uh, normal what happens is a portal is fixed if it, uh, it needs to just a safety. Um, the guys will go and uh, council only pays for a follow once. As the contractor blows up, the contractor who goes there pulls, pulls a follow up. Um, the intention is for, for a follow to be fixed in good weather, so we don't have any water in it. Uh, sometimes we'll leave the follow ups there so that we can actually look at a bigger treatment because uh, that's a good indication that the pavement is failing. So uh, start to look at a better, uh, better approach to the, the application of the pavement. But I will, I will follow the customer body. If you can just highlight the areas that we, you've seen in this, mm. that's come from yeah. last year, it shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't be there. Uh, Kokaka Road is one of them, and uh, Kiriri uh, Road is one of them, um, Litfield Road, uh, some holes that come in there, and uh, I could go on with mm. um, it. The, the Wanjuri Road, um, it, the, the, Fairly short sections of the water road that were rebuilt probably three years ago, maybe two years ago. Yep. They're in the shopping state. So we do it here. And you know, I'll just have to do it here. Thank you for that. Councillor, about the limits here, so to Brickett Street, it just seems to be a little bit of a lot of our time in Main Street. And then Main Street, I don't know, and there's the, I mean, I realise it's a pretty fair bit in Main Street, but we're making it. Yeah, yeah, so, so I think the contractors have been on identifying all those uh, issues. It's just a couple of weather. We just need to have yeah, good, yeah, good, good, good weather to, and it's, it's it. Yeah, so I mean, and it's evidence, uh, given the travel to set hours, you see them on the so it's just a weather thing. Very short for the last few seasons. Well, I was just saying that one of the things maybe we need to is leave us in the process and make sure we begin the process of the timing of it and, and then the guys go in and do a more permanent fix and just follow it. Do we have a motion to 
do we do a regular inspection after we weather, or is it are we reactive? I mean, we can't do probably with everything. I understand that. So there's a general um, uh, inspection of the regime in place. So the contractor will go and do some more. Yeah. Well, that's a once a month. Because the physios and the others, uh, little roles are done for a few months. But what we've done is that we, uh, we're trying to be more proactive. So I initiated uh, a new process where we've got uh, staff actually doing a dialogue. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get into the pickup process. Thank you. 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 So uh, page 44. Just highlighting, um, I'll give you kind of an update on the work that's happened at the uh, Theatre of Memorial. So if there's any questions on that, happy to take that. Um, further down the page, there's an update on uh, the Theatre Walkway. We've made some progress along the way. We've met the project manager and, and provided them with a couple of options on the bridge. The price that we've seen. On page uh, 45, just highlighting uh, the following outcomes that. Uh, Staff are busy looking at completing uh, a condition assessment and we'll develop a uh, remote program for the board for the rest of the day. Councillor Yes, certainly. Um, just going back to the East Bowling Club the demolition, I haven't been there for a couple of days, but there was a large eye beam was left sitting there. Has that been removed or what is the plan for that? I think it's later on in the, in the uh, report. We need to talk about the other thing. Oh, okay. Well, I'll follow up. My understanding is I think it's on the market. Uh, we, I think we had an offer yes. for it yes. um, from a uh, party uh, because of the real policy in that, that short space period. We put it on one of the websites to, to try to sell us in what price we can do it. So I think it's going to be a price. Yeah, so just, you know, just one little idea. Yeah, yeah. Ruin the look of the thing. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on to page 46, uh, just highlighting uh, the damaged streetlights on the streets. Um, we've uh, got the vehicle illustrations that, that uh, possibly be recovered from the. Uh, the um, bottom of the page, uh, just highlighting that uh, consents, uh, we're fully complied with all the consents of the Regional Council and to the orders. Page 47, uh, sadly there was another fatality. Uh, since I looked at the report, uh, it was tell the uh, just like of uh, the human conditions that happened last week. Um, on page 48, uh, update on uh, the storm damage. Um, today, we spent $113,000 um, on the repair works. Uh, I've done an application to enter the team, hoping to get uh, funding uh, for that on $40,000. So where does that expenditure come from that we have to carry? We, I know we budget for some, but have we spent it all? Because we can't have a particular expenditure this winter. So, uh, Madam Chair, we, we normally have a minimal budget of $20,000 for emergency works. And, and uh, it's, it's all based on a historical, we've never had a major <coughs> And um, a couple of years ago, we had a big blowout for Calvert's and it cost us $180,000. But going forward, we need to start recognizing that there yes. is potential uh, risk in terms of the conversions and, and the yes. options. So, so we will be adjusting that in our asset management plan. Thank you. We need to extend that. Yeah. So, uh, in terms of the funding, uh, we're hoping to get 54% of NZT. The other 46% will be uh, offset against the uh, current budgets. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And on page 49, uh, Mr. Hobbs has introduced a new uh, parks and reserves manager that started with us a week ago. And finally, on page 50, uh, just to highlight that the hotel pools, the uh, staff are looking at uh, each other, and uh, we're hoping to start in a week's time. Thank you, Madam Chief. Thank you. Now, I'm sorry, I've got another question. Yeah. The storm expenditure, um, it will be offset against the current budget, so that obviously means some of that was planned for this year will not occur. Yeah. What will be the cost um, associated with that? Because that is obviously work that should be done, yeah. 
and won't be done. So will that be the lower standard? Because uh, the most of the uh, PS is, is towards the uh, carbon interface one. So we have a problem with this where we identify all the uh, hours that are, mm -hmm. uh, uh, need to be replaced due to age. So all we're doing offsetting that is postponing that and adjusting the ones that are, uh, need to be replaced right now because of the big So that's where the biggest funding is. The other funding is around uh, the maintenance stuff where we have a lot of surfs and uh, cheese all over. So we're doing that for other bodies. So in terms of the renewal stuff, Payment stuff, it's so there, the budget has been touched. This is more general reasons. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Councillor Evans. Uh, just a couple of little um, thank yous up at the top of page 50 about the damage to a manhole and stay out of one outside TV. And uh, back to page 47, uh, Paul was here about the outcome. Just nice to see that little report there on the paper for trees. We've talked about that, I think about a year ago in the Grants Committee and um, this thing's a little well out there. Thank you. 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 Yeah, um, we have an update on the, um, the screen behind the book. Mr. Holmes was going to update us. That was next. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I received a letter from the Regional Council. This is uh, in regard to the work that was done in the Popular Stream some months ago. I've heard you reported to Council that we uh, had a, um, a query from a member of the public. We've gone down there to look at that and inform the Regional Council that there was perhaps potentially some ground for concern. Um, I won't read all of this to you, but basically the information I've received from the Popular Regional Council is that um, they did a site inspection uh, by their staff and determined the bullet had been removed from the popular restream outside the permitted time, permitted time frame of May to September inclusive. Popular restream is, is the classification of significant indigenous fisheries and trout fisheries and trout spawning habitat. It's also considered to be a river in terms of the Resource Management Act. Basically, one of the regional plan rules states that the activity shouldn't take place in a significant fishery um, during the of December inclusive. And made us a inclusive in terms of trout spawning areas. So basically, the, the upshot is that um, we that was minimal impact because the stream bed is muddy rather than gravel, so it's not a uh, preferred position or place for trout spawning. However, we were operating with, we were operating within our existing rights in terms of working in the stream, albeit we did it in the wrong time frame. So we've been uh, issued with a formal warning in respect to uh, unlawful vegetation clearance. So it's a formal warning that goes against our record at the Regional Council. We do something similarly, obviously, that will be taken into account, but basically the initial now closed with that formal warning. And I just want to add uh, with that that uh, plans were put in place at Regional Council um, to mitigate any conflict, potential conflicts of interest over this particular um, issue. Okay, we've just something to that. Um, what, what's in the cleanup? Once again, I haven't even had the sports ground this week, which I normally do before these meetings. Yeah, so they haven't clarified that with us. Having said that, the regional council staff have been working with our staff, and I don't know if Mr. Mayu knows anything more. There was concern about moving anything because of the time of year. Um, I'm not sure whether we've left things in place because of that. No, 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 I'll follow up. Yeah, we'll, we'll follow up. But basically, yeah. certainly the conversation I had with the regional council was um, would be a decision whether we needed to clear the the tree starts to some way, or whether we leave them in situ until such time as the travel and the fishery done anything. Thank you. I think you wish, I think you would appear it is, you know, hey, that's done. If we'd have done it at the right time, which is about the end of January, etc., we could have gone ahead and do it first, give the trout the chance in case they disturb anything more, and then go in and clean up. Yeah, and just the contractor was sort of saying, hey, I don't want to leave anything half done, but, you know, if we didn't say go in and do it, would there be any further disturbance in terms of the spawning? So it's easier to sort of say, hey, we might have to put up with an eyesore, unfortunately, until the right season comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that was uh, the issue with the regional council, it was done in a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 there was certainly no issue with the work that was being done up yeah. the time frame. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hate to disagree, but I, would, I thought it was a pretty shoddy job all around by yeah. uh, yeah. our contractor. And, and, yeah. regional, regional council looked at all that, they looked at people in the stream, they looked at what their, their activity had taken place, 
place and, and him know the ship presents how they acted. So they were able to look out of what they were able to do. God had a lot of work. This is on a related matter. You can see the photos, this is the slip I got in my field. This is the photos of Chelsea Street cleanup for the drain or the reinstated drain. It could be arguable that that, that that was something that required a resource consent from the White House and the Council. On the ground, that the, the full photo shows vegetation, the after photo shows, shows no vegetation, and there is a possibility that some in the way of soil could have been washed down that drain into a bigger waterway. This, this, is, this is something that farmers have to constantly ask themselves about when they clean drains out. In fact, I understand now, the region council rule, but uh, rural communities do, that if you are drain cleaning more than 50 metres of your drain, time, you must get region council. This is any drain, whether it's miles away from the stream or whatever. And all I'm really just pointing out is stupid rule, yeah. because um, what's been done in Calcio Street makes eminent sense to me. Uh, but you know, this is this is the sort of world we're living in. Like <coughs> and um, I'm sure that that Calcio Street or Grain Zero will be much improved by that world grain cleaning exercise. But, you know, I don't know whether the CEO's got the comments about that, but that's the rule of the diet, that any disturbance of the drain, whether it's fisheries there or not, um, and if that disturbance may mean that the sediment that goes into a larger stream as a result, which it probably would happen, or what would have happened there, um, yeah, basically all sorts of state accounts would be beyond the joke, really, in my opinion, but the cow is a comment. Do you want to respond? Three minutes, John. I know he's been on the hour he made, but um, yeah, we, we work with quite stringent resources and sets around things like the body and the you know, everything else that we do, <coughs> and, um, and therefore, you know, we, op we operate within that reason, with what that resource consent allows us to do. Um, so, um, you know, I, I can't comment on the specifics of that particular drain cleaning. Yeah. Many other we, we would have done that. But one thing we have certainly learned from the Pokeroo stream is that whatever we're doing now on waterways, we talk to council, regional council first, to make sure we are operating within the parameters that we're about to. Um, so, yeah. Councillor yeah. Thank you for that. The definition of water courses and water yeah. flow is very wide under the Act. It even catches, if you have water coming off a spouting down onto a drain pipe and that water runs across your lawn to a stream, whether it's intermittent or permanent, that's still captured by the Act. So any flow of water, whether intermittent, intermittent or permanent, is captured by the Act and you've got to look at the rules when you're dealing with it. Mm -hmm. And this is what caught out some people up near uh, a friend's uh, farm and that they thought they were just clearing out old drains but it didn't work out that way so they were prosecuted. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I think the key is that you know, we do work very closely with the regional council and it's a real collaborative relationship and, uh, and the message is that we need to keep talking to each other and make sure we do it. So if there are any other comments on uh, Mr. Nagel's report, the um, recommendations on... Sorry, yeah. Chair, if I may, just one thing that has been brought to my attention that we haven't, wasn't done in the report that, but it should sit in the EA's uh, secret report, is the issue around the airport, I see Mr. Simpson's mm -hmm. here, so I'm yeah. um, quite happy to update you on where that's at today. Um, so Mr. Simpson and Mr. Owen uh, from the Council have been with Mr. Simpson. Um, Mr. Simpson has some concerns around the report that was put to Council about delisting the airport. Um, so we've asked Mr. Simpson to clarify what those concerns are. Um, we will then take those concerns to CAA and get the, uh, get the um, uh, opinion from CAA to make sure that we are actually all talking the right language and legislation is, is applied and so on. So once we get that feedback from CAA, we'll then uh, be able to come back to Council with a report. Question, has that gone to CAA yet? Um, <coughs> Mr. Simpson, sorry if I may to you, Madam Chair. Yes, absolutely. Um, you've, you've provided your feedback. Yes, you have. I did indeed. Yeah, um, yes. Remember, there is a time imperative on this, uh, which is imposed not by me, but by the 
management company of the drone racing champions that are the draw card for this whole thing, which is the 7th of October. That was stated right from the beginning, so I don't see council meeting that, which is a huge loss to the community. So, Mr. Simpson has responded with a feedback? Yes. Oh, I, I, yes. It's all right. I know that um, Ms. Anderson and Suffolk isn't working with us. That would be a good decision. Okay. Yeah. It's a decision you've been working with Suffolk. Will it be meeting any of the deadlines? Or, well, what's the deadline? Has it been asked? Three years in Personally, I don't get right, um, and, and we are restricted a little bit by this, the CAA's own frames as well. Yes. Um, but we'll see if you can put it on the and get the answers to these possible. Thank you. Uh, I'll tell you something else yeah, for you. Um, and that is at the same time, I think, with from the Tuckerero Club, small and all as they are, should be spoken with. They have concerns uh, about some of the matters, especially with the delisting. I raised my concerns at the last meeting when we discussed this. Um, they have just recently had their AGM, and um, you know they, they were, they're a fee payer up at the, uh, at the airfield, and I think they need to be considered as well. I know they've been doing some work in attracting, attracting other, um, other business to that airfield as well. So I think we need to talk with one of their reps. Yeah, through, through you, Chair. Council looked at the major strategy around the overall use of the airstrip probably two years ago. I'm sure you'll remember that. Um, decisions were made as a result of that. Um, we've obviously now gone through the, you know, considering whether we do this or not, and, and you've made a decision around that. We're, we're respecting Mr. Simpson's opinion and trying to get some uh, idea of where that sits. I do think, and particularly in light of having Mr. Marshall on the staff now as well, and his involvement with the Whaley Easter, um, what we've got there, that it's something we probably should bring back to the table and look at in its entirety again in the future in terms of what the opportunity is. Um, you know, there are a whole lot of opportunities at the airport that we're probably not realising that we haven't considered in the past. Um, I'm also very mindful that we do have a relationship with CTC and they are paying us to on the fee, which is still uh, running um, around you know, their actions at the airport, their plannings and so on the airport as well. So there's a lot of different issues that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And agree with that, Jake. Uh, 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 as long as that airport issue is yeah, ongoing and uh, it's unfortunate Mr. Anderson is on leave. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. it is unfortunate. Yeah. But I, you're right, I would rather do it once and do it correctly um, and have all the information in front of us, yeah. for sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that. All right. Thank you, Ms. Nido. Can I have a mover and a seconder for that report, please? Or have we just done? No, Councillor Lee and Councillor Gash. Thank you. Uh, page 51, item 5.5, Mrs. Fabry. We're going to talk about antenna. Antenna, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, morning, Council. Oh, good morning, Councillor Shida. Um, I'm going to take the report as read. Um, and I was hoping to do a live demo of antenna for you, just to make a lot of stuff in the report actually real. Um, antenna is actually going live today. So the trial site that I have got access to is going to be up and down. So what I've done is I've put together a six-side PowerPoint presentation with some visuals. Um, the your indulgence, I'd like to mm -hmm. just kick off with that and we'll just make some of the stuff in the report easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't need to see the small script here. Basically, this is the content author side of it. So there's two sides, two antenna. The content author, which would be council, and then the user, which would be obviously the community. This is the page that we log on to. Um, the, the, those, the, the list is all the um, notifications that we've put out prior. Um, key thing is a create new, just one big button there. And I've got backwards. Um, we then come up with this screen. This is a topic selection screen, so we just select which topic uh, the notification would go under. Uh, those are all pre-selected, and we can change those from time to time as other things come on board. Uh, simple for and form, there's no two-page service. That's it. We put the title in, a bit of a short description, and then we can go on with a bit of a fuller, long, longer description. We can put in a hyperlink, some hyperlink text, um, this bit here, the publish from and to, 
we can put that over a week's period. So we can start the notification on a Monday, finish it on a Friday, and if a new user signs in on the Wednesday, they'll get that notification. And publishing zone, um, so that is where the, um, the notification will go to a specific zone, and if you've got an address logged in that zone, you will get the notification. So the, you, you just say, you carry that if you're a dollar in it, yes. and you registered with um, Antino, yes. and you'll get that notification. Everybody who... If you're a dog owner, yeah. so for instance, we would put out a message like uh, dog registration notice is due. Yeah. We would put that message out to the entire South Waikato district zone, and that covers all the addresses. If, for instance, there is a water mains break in Tōkoroa, we would select, at this stage, Tōkoroa Urban, yeah. but a future development of the app will be that we can draw a smaller area on that. So just go to those time. And then we create it, and then that's just a notification detail that we get on our end. Onto the user. So once you've actually logged on and downloaded Antenna, I couldn't take screenshots of that because I've already done it, so I couldn't take shots of that process. Um, <coughs> so this is a standard drone mobile phone, it's my phone. Uh, when you get your notifications, when you pull down, you swipe down. This is what you would get. This is the Antenna symbol. We've got the rates reminder, payment due, avoid your, that's the heading, the summary, and then if you click on it, you go to the full details. One of the really interesting things is that you can put on a link through to our website so you can go straight, up. you can move straight through to payment, you know, pay online. And I did. That's it. So, yeah. Oh, sorry, let me explain you guys. I'll just tell what my process is. Okay, so um, what you do as a user is you, is you log on and you can log on multiple addresses that are of interest to you. So obviously I did council work, so I've done the office here. Um, I was trialling it with Craig. So we put in Craig's home, we put in my home, and we put in my kid's school, just so that we could track um, how the notifications work. What this is showing you is that the rates reminder payment, we would obviously um, notify the entire district for that. So what that shows you is that I'm picking up that notification because of all those addresses. So if, for instance, it was a reminder about the time of recycling being collected, I would only pick it up from family home or possibly kids' schools. So that just gives you an idea of which address is of interest to that notification. Mm -hmm. So that's and so we have been involved with this from the start in the actual development of it. So what, what's the involvement? You've talked about it. Yeah, I've talked about Common Hub, but changed the name, so it's, it's right. the same, mm -hmm. same technology. Mm -hmm. Yes, so staff were involved in a trial. We did an initial workshop, and I think it was a three-hour workshop, where we involved, involved staff from the community development team. Um, obviously communications, our IT staff, uh, the likes of Gordon with roading, um, Ian Willing, civil defence and Andrew Pascoe with our services. So it's things around roading, uh, closures, breaks, potholes, uh, water services, water main breaks, that kind of thing, and obviously events in the community. Um, and then from that point they went away again and did a bit more development work um, and then came back and did a user trial with us. Uh, where we teamed up with one person with a laptop in the council and the other person with a mobile being a user and did the chemical trials like that. We're not the only council that they've done this with, they've done it with a number of councils. Um, and yeah, yeah so what we're, what we're after here is probably a three or two and a half year commitment to it, so it's for the rest of this financial year, which, is which will be within council budgets already. But I think what Mrs. Fabry's Favour is wanting is to embed it in the system as, and say that it will go into the annual plan for year two and year three. And this is the way of the future with, with apps and, and um, media, etc. Um, going going forward, I think that we need to be up to date with with the way we communicate um, and get information. And this is just another new way. Your worship, you're looking at me quizzically yeah. and. Yeah. But this appears to me to be an information service. It's not a discussion service.
service. So that if a ratepayer gets the information there and wishes to enter into discussion about it, you know, I've got my rate demand and I decide what the hell are my rates being spent on, how do I initiate to get information out of my discussion? Because all you're doing with all this is telling me where the pothole is, or telling me where the water's off, or you're telling me you're not giving me a chance to discuss. Have I missed something? Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. So on page 53, there's a roadmap. Yeah. Um, so they're launching today, like I said, and um, they're launching with the base product. So they've got a whole lot of... Um, we won't touch that. my deal, so that's what we like. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they've got a whole... And if you, if you look at that, that is from now until third and fourth quarter of 2017. So it's over the next year, they're going to be, uh, they've identified a number of enhancements. And one of those enhancements, um, your worship, is feedback. One of those enhancements is surveys. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a number, um, you can, um, well there's a number there, but I mean, if there's any that you don't understand, I have a list of ones that I didn't understand, but an explanation. Um, there's a whole lot of advancements and enhancements that they're going to introduce. One of them, for instance, is the ability to draw around a map on Google Maps. So um, we've got to preset our zones at the moment, and it will go live like that but pre-setting, um, being able to draw around a map for a smaller target of the area is one of the enhancements that they've got. Mm -hmm. So at this stage, it only goes out as an information service. Um, yes, and what it does as well, what's really good is if, for instance, one of the, uh, one of the features that they've got, which is, which is not common to a lot of map apps like this, is that you can opt out of a particular message so say, for instance, um, me living at home, I mean, I work for council, and, and I know when I've got my children with me, they take the recycling out. So I know the week that I've got my kids, they do it. And if I get a recycling, you know, put your rubbish out, you know, recycling out Tuesday morning message, I can opt out of that one. So it will stay within the zone, and I'll get all the other messages in the zone, but I can opt out of that particular message about recycling, for instance. Mm -hmm. Councilman, yeah. So, that's council side of it. So as a user, so if there's a pothole on the road, I can actually report that mm -hmm. to the system. Not at the moment. Not at the moment. Not uh, but it, that is coming. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I was just wondering how we're going to link it to... Um, to so this is actually council just council giving out information, information at this yeah. stage. One of the, yeah, initially. One of the integration techniques is um, in, in, the, in the third green in the, in the last green column, it's called Integrate Responses into Engagement Systems. I didn't understand what that meant, so I went back to them. And that's basically integration straight into my NCS and service request system. So they're looking at all of that. Um, down the track. So is that definite that that's actually going to happen? Through you, Chief, I may just to, sorry to interrupt. Um, the, the key about this is that it's being tailored to the local government. Yeah. It's not a it's not a map that you know, everyone will be able to jump into. So, so they can work within our systems and, and the, uh, the, the search request like, uh, scenarios that, so it is kind of smooth for us, so it's going to be, yeah, it will work very well for um, you. I suppose to answer your question, um, they have delivered so far on their timelines, and mm -hmm. they appear to be quite confident that they're going to put these in place. We've actually worked on them with the, in the development phase on a couple of these features that aren't in the base product, so they're definitely tracking along along. Okay, thank you. Right, Your Worship, did you want to say something? Yes, and then it's Councillor Bell, Councillor McGill. It's not a platform for discussion like others. Future enhancements will include feedback and surveys yes. if Council wants it. So, in terms of surveys and that sort of thing, it looks good, but um, you know, handing out information in which, you know, even as I try to understand what the words mean, integrate problem reports. So, you know, yeah. Which is why I've got my special little list here. Um, your Worship, fair enough, and it won't be, a, it's not a platform like Facebook. And I think we need to remember that we've got Facebook and we have the discussions on Facebook. This is a different system, it's a public notification system. It's complementary to, but we're not replacing Facebook or Twitter or the website or any other means of getting messages out. It's complementary to. Um, like it says in the report, people look at their phone 250 times a day and um, simply putting, putting down a notification to get information. 
if they wish to ask, you can always put it in front of council. Um, we, can, we can promote Facebook through it, you know, for that discussion before. Mm -hmm. Email, a bit of email, uh, messages, telephones, and so 